tuning in to Brought House Sports. I am your host, Emily Cheddar Dog Dillion. Well, at least we didn't embarrass ourselves as bad as the Schittsburgh Stoolers did. On 3rd and 14, Joe Flacco makes a pass to Amari Cooper for a gain of 22 yards. Joe Flacco passes again, this time to Jerome Ford for 13 yards. Then on 2nd and 4, LA's 24. Flacco makes a pass up forward again, this time for a touchdown. Rams get the ball back, now 1st and 10. Matthew Stafford passes to Puka Nakua for a gain of 12 yards to midfield. Kyrian Williams runs to his left for a gain of 6 yards. Unnecessary roughness was called on Juan Thornhill for a 15-yard penalty. This sets up a Lucas Havrisic field goal of 44 yards. Two drives later, and the Rams get the ball back, now 1st and 10. Stafford passes to Tutu Atwell for a gain of 9 yards. Immediately after, Stafford passes to Nakua, who goes for a monstrous gain of 70 yards and a Los Angeles touchdown. Browns trail the Ravens 7-10. After Lucas Havrisic's 43-yard attempt, which was no good, we fast forward seven drives later, well into the second because it was mostly back and forth punting. First and 10 at their own 20, Joe Flacco passes to Elijah Moore for a gigantic gain of 42 yards. Three drives later, now second and 10, Ford runs to his left for a gain of 10 yards and a first down. This sets up a 40-yard field goal by Dustin Hopkins. The kick is good. Rams get the ball back, now third and two. Matthew Stafford makes a pass to Tyler Higby for a gain of 14 yards. Three plays later, now third and four. Stafford passes again to Higby for a gain of 21 yards and a first down. Three plays later, Kyrene Williams runs it to his right for a gain of eight yards. Another three plays later, Williams runs again to his right for a gain of three yards. This sets up an easy 28-yard field goal by Havrisic. Brown still narrowly trailing the Rams 10 to 13. The narrow trail still continues, kinda. Browns get the ball back at first and 10 at their own 35. Joe Flacco passes to Harrison Bryant for a gain of nine yards. Five plays later, now a gain of first and 10. Flacco passes to David Njoku for a gain of nine yards. Another three plays later, it's first and 15. Flacco passes to Elijah Moore for a considerable gain of 22 yards. Unfortunately, this drive only sets up a 24-yard field goal by Dustin Hopkins, but at least it puts points on the board. Rams get the ball back, and Matthew Stafford passes to Cooper Cup for a gain of 9 yards. In the next play, Kyrene Williams runs to his left for a gain of 10 yards. Two plays later, now first and 15, Puka Nakua runs to his right for a gargantuan gain of 31 yards. Yes, I'm finding big words for this just because of how big these gains are. Four plays later, now 2nd and 20, Stafford passes deep to Demarcus Robinson for a whopping gain of 30 yards. This sets up a Stafford pass to Robinson for 7 yards and a touchdown. Browns trail the 3rd, 13 to 20. The 4th quarter is where shit hits the fan. Browns begin with the ball, now 2nd and 10. Joe Flacco passes to Elijah Moore for 8 yards. 7 plays later, now 1st and 10. Pierre Strong runs this time to his right for a gain of 13 yards and a 1st down. This sets up a Flacco pass to Harrison Bryant for a touchdown. The extra point, however, was no good. The same cannot be said two drives later. Flacco's pass intended to Moore gets intercepted by former Brown John Johnson III to Cleveland's 24. Rams get the ball back now 2nd and 7. Matthew Stafford passes to Cooper Cup for a gain of 13 yards. Now 1st and goal. This sets up a Stafford pass to Coop for a 3-yard pass and a Rams touchdown. Two drives later, now first and 10, Stafford passes to Kyrene Williams for a gain of 15 yards. Some more Rams things happen, and Williams runs up the middle for a touchdown. In the Browns' last drive, they just gave up, because Flacco gets sacked by Kobe Turner, and then Turner and Aaron Donald sack Flacco again for a safety. Browns lose 19-36. First things first, we gotta talk about Joe Flacco here. After going 23 of 44 for 254 yards and two touchdowns and an interception, he will be returning to the practice squad. After losing 19 of 36 to the Rams, head coach Kevin Stefanski is currently unclear as to who he will be having as starting quarterback for week 14 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The most feasible option right now would be PJ Walker, which you can only hope will be prepared for a Jags team without Trevor Lawrence. Dorian Thompson Robinson is still in concussion protocol, which is the only other alternative, but depth at the quarterback position is looking bleak. 
keep in mind that despite it being his first start, Joe Flacco did throw for two touchdowns despite the 52.3 completion rating and the fourth quarter pick to former Brown John Johnson III. My personal concern is the lack of consistency at quarterback, and it's perhaps that's what makes the offense just not appear confident at all. Hopefully, they can get their shit together and turn things around. Browns owner Jimmy Haslam is being accused by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway and his brother, former Tennessee governor Bill Haslam, uh, of offering bribes. The issue is that the Haslam family is allegedly bribing pilot Flying J executives to inflate co uh, company profits and force Berkshire Hathaway to pay more for the Haslam's remaining 20% ownership of the company. In 2017, Berkshire Hathaway and the Haslam family agreed to an agreement to buy 80% of the company by 2023 and allow the Haslam's the option to sell the remaining 20% at the end of the year. The 20% share is reportedly worth roughly $3 billion. Late October, the Haslam sued Berkshire Hathaway, accusing them of changing their accounting rules to devalue the family's 20% stake. Meanwhile, Berkshire Hathaway is countersuing, alleging that Jimmy Haslam has been offering bribes to 15 PFJ executives to inflate company profits. And it feels like I'm kind of repeating myself here. But anyways, basically, rich old men are complaining about rich old men stuff. Either way, things like this is why Jimmy Haslam is hateable as an NFL owner. Amari oh, Cooper no. left There's in the second down. quarter in Sunday's game against the Rams and is being evaluated for a concussion. In a slant route, Cooper got slammed between two Rams defenders and stayed on the field until being escorted into the medical tent. It was last week he suffered a rib injury against the Broncos after catching the ball and dealing with the blow that sat him out for the remainder of the game. It was following the Broncos game that he received x-rays that showed no broken bones and came back into practice after Wednesday. The injury bug is more than noticeably plaguing the Browns, and it could only be hoped that both he and Dorian Thompson Robinson can come back for Week 14. It's the injuries that are hurting the confidence of the Cleveland Browns, and it's shown from the drop passes that hurt Joe Flacco against the Rams. Well, that's bullshit. Denver Broncos linebacker Baron Browning just dodged getting fined for the rubbing the passer call that was called on him and sent Dorian Thompson Robinson into concussion protocol. Last week, Browning kept denying that the hit he delivered was out of line saying, I knew it was a clean hit, so I didn't have anything to worry here. I knew I pulled up a little bit. There could have been a way bigger collision, but I pulled up a little bit. On Saturday, the NFL agreed with his argument and did not find the Broncos linebacker. But let's be honest though, Roger Goodell and the NFL as an organization hates the Cleveland Browns and just want to keep that uh, continuing with the script that they already have. We already know that as a fact. Receiver Michael Woods II has been suspended for the remainder of the NFL season for violating the league's personal conduct policy. Who is he? He hasn't played much since he was drafted by the Browns in the sixth round last year and only made five receptions for 45 yards in 10 games. In April 4th of this year, Woods ruptured his Achilles during a workout with Deshaun Watson and of course hasn't played at all this year. Woods posted on X that this year probably been the toughest in my life, but I can't be broken. This year is special for me because it brought me closer to God. I changed my habits and thoughts for the better and developed a higher level of perseverance through it all. It's still unclear as to what Woods was suspended for, and his post on X is obscure as to what resulted into this. And before we go, we get to talk about dinner while having dinner. Yeah, I'm having cream of mushroom soup here. Hmm. While hazing happens every year in the NFL, and last week Monday as both Siaki Aika and Isaiah McGuire got their welcome to the NFL moment. While out in Los Angeles, the Browns defensive line went out for the rookie dinner, which footed both Aika and McGuire a dinner bill of $40,000. Hmm. This famous rookie dinner was coming, and it happened. The shock on both men's faces was something to chuckle at. As it was discussed in another podcast I do called Browns Bitches. Sorry mom, I did not come up with the name, but it was mentioned that the Browns are more coherent as a team than the Steelers are, and that's why the Browns aren't as unraveled as them. And thank you again for tuning in to Brought House Sports. Once again, I'm your host, Emily Cheddar Dog Dillion. Please like and subscribe and turn on the notification bells. I greatly appreciate it. It's also how you can find more of my videos and help me get through the algorithms as well. Once again, I'm your host, Emily Cheddar Dog Dillion, and I will see you next time.
Let's go downstairs to Tom. What's going on down there, Tom? You're Get, seeing it. Get that happened maybe five yards away from where we're standing. You can see that it's when Greenlaw reached out toward Dom, who provides security and so much else. He's returning to the Eagles. Over. Personal foul number 57 of San Francisco, who has also been disqualified. Which is kind of wild because he's the head of security. Yeah, so no, his, they're making him leave. He's, he's walking away. His responsibility is there. Yeah. I think you're right. Tom, who's supposed to provide security, is on his way out. Wow. He's been with the organization forever. I, I'm telling you, he, he's he's the most popular guy in Philadelphia right now. Look, he's getting a stand and go. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I mean, we started the broadcast telling you he gave us a great restaurant deal last night. Now <laughs> he's getting a stand and go at the link.